Hi, my name is Lukas and I'm the CTO of Brunology Company. Last week I've been visiting Silicon Valley as a speaker at the Smartnik Summit. My presentation had a very positive reception and generated some noticeable interest among participants. Therefore, I have decided to repeat the same presentation and record it for anyone else that might be interested. So let's jump right in. The topic of the presentation is acceleration of network packet processing using FPGA-based Smartniks. Especially, we look at how to move beyond 100 gigabits per second throughput towards achieving efficient wire speed processing of 400 gigabit Ethernet frames using currently available chips. The trend of increasing network speed is noticeable across the board. Many different applications and use cases start to require some data power acceleration to keep up. This is also evident from the ever-increasing market for high-speed network cards. Market research and forecasts from companies like Omdia and Del Oro show not only the rising market cap for high-speed network interface cards, but also a noticeable increase in market share of SmartNIC acceleration NICs compared to standard network cards. The programmability at the NIC level is crucial, as various applications have uh, different requirements for acceleration. Not only in terms of table parameters, key sizes and organization of the tables, but also in used matching algorithms and uh, supported actions. For the internet speeds of up to 100 gigabits per second, there are some established SmartNIC solutions already. From the hardware perspective, there are not only available FPGAs for multiple vendors, but already a multitude of different FPGA accelerated cards. Some card vendors even have different 100G cards in their portfolio, and some of them may even have multiple physical 100G ports. For these speeds, the hardware is also not the only thing that is already available. Programmability of FPGA firmware has been or is also addressed to some extent by different means. There are existing IP cores and hardware architectures available from different providers. Uh, they include nearly all main packet processing operations like uh, DMA transfers, packet parsing, deparsing, match action tables, and so on. For easier programmability, support of high-level languages is also prevalent. This may include some P4 compilers or some combination of other HLS techniques. Finally, even completely in integrated pipelines and polished turnkey solutions for specific use cases uh, may be provided by some companies. The only current problem at 100 gigabits per second is usually the little start uh, at the end of the speed rating. Unfortunately, many of the mentioned solutions are optimized to achieve uh, 100 gigabits per second only in the best or in the average case scenario. In uh, some non-standard or edge case situations, usually when shorter packets are transmitted, the actual throughput is degraded significantly. This can be even between two to five times uh, in degradation, bringing the performance down to only tens of gigabits per second. So that was the situation for up to 100 gigabits per second. Now, if we move to faster than 100 gigabit Ethernet, the situation is a bit different. But the hardware is already starting to emerge. Uh, all of the biggest FPGA vendors uh, support the 400 gigabit Ethernet standard in their latest family of available chips. In all cases, they even provide hardened implementations of Ethernet layer up to Mac. Xilinx Verizal chips has DC Mac cores, Intel Agilex has F-Tile Ethernet IP, and Achronix Speedtester 7T also provides 400G Ethernet subsystem. These new FPGA chips are also already used by selected card vendors in their first 400G capable NICs that have been just recently unveiled. So, the hardware platforms are ready, now how do we utilize it? Let's start with the host server. The interface on the other side of the card must enable comparable performance as the network port. For 400G Ethernet, uh, this is enabled by advent and adoption of new PCI Express generations. With older PCI Express Generation 3, an impractically large interface with 64 lanes would be needed to achieve data transfers at over 400 gigabits per second. With Gen 4 and 5, this is reduced to manageable 32 or 16 lanes, so just one or two full-sized card slots on the motherboard. 
Gen 4 and 5 is also already supported in the latest FPGAs by hard PCI endpoints and compatible servers and CPUs are also available. Fast PCI uh, transfers are also aided by the increasing speed of the host DDR memories. So, interfaces on both sides of the card, on both sides of the FPGA, are capable of 400G transfers. Now, it is only up to firmware designers to be able to efficiently wield this power. But the FPGA design at this speed can be challenging. To achieve and sustain this new performance threshold means yet another complexity level for starting projects. For existing projects, the question is how to scale up the cores in the existing codebase beyond 100G, and if it is even possible within limits of FPGA working frequency or available chip space. In total, this may seem overwhelming for some, even to the point that they are deterred from using acceleration at all. But the situation is not so dire as I will soon show you. Some may argue that upgrade to 400G is actually easy. Just use existing 100G cores or approaches and do one of these things. For example, just add registers to increase the frequency four times and you're fine. Or just use four times wider data buses without any further considerations. Or maybe just split the data stream into four independent slower 400G paths. Well, with any of these approaches, you will eventually run into some serious issues. Clocks on the latest FPGA families may, in isolated cases, achieve even frequency of around a gigahertz. But uh, for practical purposes, when integrating multiple cores together and filling most of the chip area, or when implementing some of uh, more complex data processing, the achievable frequency with close timing throughout the whole design is still only in hundreds of megahertz. For case 2, with careless data bus widening, the already mentioned problem with performance degradation on short packets is made even more severe. Overhead of packet alignment may increase fewfold, degrading the performance by additional similar magnitude. Finally, dividing the data stream requires complex splitters and mergers where each of them must include very large buffers. Also, packet reordering is introduced when short packets can be processed earlier than larger one. So this must be also addressed and solved based on the use case requirements. Therefore, I think that a more dramatic change is needed. Architectures must change at the lowest levels. Individual IP cores must be adapted themselves with new design paradigm in mind. Because practical wire speed packet processing for speeds beyond 100G uh, requires native support of multiple packets per clock cycle. Data bus structure must be adapted to reflect this change and enable effective sharing of data words between the consecutive packets. Then uh, using a single byte uh, bus will not introduce performance degradation or need for any additional reordering or buffers. But uh, the individual IP cores must be adapted and optimized to support this fine grain of parallelism. A more detailed description of this multiple packets per clock cycle processing idea and how to design efficient FPGA architectures with this feature can be found in my proposed MFB methodology that I have published a few years ago. Now, since then, we have already implemented multi-frame capable modules for the most common networking operations, showing the feasibility of 400G and faster wire speed processing in current FPGAs. These modules are actually crucial and the most complex part of any acceleration solution, because building a pipeline for any use case remains similarly simple at 400G as before in 100G. For most use cases, you need a sequence of packet parser, match tables, action execution engine, packet editor, and DMA module. Only in some advanced cases, you may want to implement and integrate an additional application-specific module. And because we already have all the necessary FPGA modules, 
we decided to also do the last step and prepare an integrated general purpose solution. We are introducing Burnologic's dynamic product line, a complete, well-defined packet processing pipeline with standard software APIs. It makes a fully featured smart NIC from any FPGA-based card with 100G, 200G or even 400G Ethernet interfaces. Dynanic enables easy utilization of the acceleration power of FPGA from software, only through usage of standard DPDK API on the data path and RTE flow on control path. For specific use cases, we support different configurations of tables inside the pipeline and also we enable extension of the pipeline by additional firmware modules. The solution will be made available very soon. We are just finalizing last steps of MVP development right now. But I already have some preliminary results to show you. We are using one of the already existing 400G cards to develop, test and deploy the first version of the solution. More specifically, it is a card from Reflux CES equipped with Intel Agilex FPGA. It was already shown in previous slides. Entire 400G Dynamic Bitstream fits very nicely into the chip with some spare logic for additional processing and most of the memory resources left for larger tables. The whole FPGA design and every used IP core are based on uh, MFB concept. Therefore, on-chip performance of the pipeline is always above what Ethernet can deliver. Wire speed processing without any packet loss is maintained in all situations and is confirmed by network-to-network -network speed measurements. The only bottleneck that we know of is at the edge of the FPGA towards the host memory, when all of the 400G data are transferred through PCI Express. Adhering to data structure and memory organization required by DPDK standard leads to some inefficiencies and bloated overhead of PCI Express transactions, which is most noticeable at very small packets. And with that, we are reaching the end of my presentation. To conclude, I have shown that the market share of flexible high-speed SmartNICs is and will be increasing. Hardware is finally ready to enable upgrade from 100G to 400G Ethernet. And although FPGA firmware design for these speeds may seem complex, it is actually doable with the right approach. So current FPGA chips are capable of supporting wire speed packet processing pipelines for up to 400 gigabits per second. I hope you find this video interesting. Feel free to contact me on a displayed email or visit Burnologic or Dynanic web pages for more information. If you decide to try Dynanic solution, want to license one of our networking IPs, or even go your own way and implement custom multi frame concept inspired cores, I will gladly answer any of your questions. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day.